Good afternoon, ladybugs and yellow jackets. Welcome. Do I even have my microphone on? Ha ha. Good afternoon, ladybugs and yellow jackets. That's what I was missing my mic. Uh, welcome to this afternoon's episode of uh, <clears throat> Handmade Home Shopping here on Faye Productions. I'm your host, Fairy Princess Lolly. And thank you all for joining us. We exciting. It is Black Friday weekend, so all kinds of the awesome sales, et cetera, et cetera. Before I jump into the show today, just uh, please, if you will, hit the like and subscribe button. And if you would like to get notifications of our future shows, please ring the bell there on YouTube. If you're not watching on YouTube, you probably have no idea what I'm talking about. That's okay. Ring the bell if you're on YouTube. We do three shows a week and uh, <clears throat> we're getting ready to roll into Christmas season here. So it should be good times. Also, we have a, a Yule card sign up. And I have put that information right there. It's also in the low bar everywhere that you're watching. So Facebook, Twitch, YouTube, you should have that in the low bar information section, a link to that. We send out Christmas cards here every single year. Our cards have come in. And if you would like to receive one, they are there for the holiday spirit. Please just go sign up, put your name on the list, and we will start sending those out probably around the somewhere around the 10th to the 15th of December. So it usually takes a little bit to get them all done. So that, that is kind of our time frame, and we love to send them. So please avail yourself, or if you would like, you can put somebody else's name to have one sent to them. So <clears throat> our show today is also sponsored by Manifest Magical Pendants, and the best place to find them actually is on Instagram. They've been here on our show before, and they, what, um, oh, excuse me. Manifest Magical Pendants are beautiful jewelry pieces that are skillfully crafted by Samantha. And she hand sculpts, they're beautiful actually, if you, they're just really great sculptures. Um, a variety of clay and crystal pendants, which each take their own unique shape and form around the gems that she selects and then works with. She uses a, a large array of stones, lapis lazuli and quartz, selenite, tiger's eye, just a whole bunch of different, a whole bunch of different selections. And um, so go please check her out on Instagram if you're interested in getting something from her. Instagram is the best place to contact her and there's a good gallery of her work there. These are one of a kind it gifts you. Nobody will have anything else like it and this year is the year for quality over quantity, folks. That is where we are at. I mean, unless your pocketbook can afford mass quantity, then do both. But uh, <laughs> that's why we're here. So with all of that said, <clears throat> now I bring us into today's show with our first vendor. And we have sound tested and everything. Hello. Welcome, Virginia. Hi. Hi. How are you? Good. How are you? I am good. Glad, glad that we are successfully here this week. So, yes. yes. So please, if you will, uh, introduce yourself to everybody. Tell us a little bit about who you are and where you're from. Give a shout out to any home peeps or people that you feel like you need to give a shout out to, events, places, <clears throat> and uh, let's see what you do. Um, my name's Virginia, and um, I make art, curious creations, and i um, I just make curiosities using natural and um, ethically sourced materials like insects, um, bones, plants, things like that. Nice. So how do you, if, if I may, how do you go about getting your ethical sourcedness? Different ways. Um, a lot of the plants I actually go out and forage for myself. Oh, wow. Where um, are you at? New Jersey. Oh, New Jersey. Okay. Yeah. That's a that's where I on the leprechauns family is from. <clears throat> so shout out to New Jersey, yay! So I do that, and then um, sometimes people know that I make these things. So they'll if they find something like dead for me, they'll they'll bring it to me, and um, and then a lot of the bugs too I get from different aviaries around the world oh, that cool. um, they actually help to um, maintain the populations. Because um, insects, they tend not to live very long. So right. when when they die, um, I buy them from the, the different aviaries. And um, 
the well, money like butterflies for example they share their they shed their wings after a week or something right so there's no real because they don't live very long and then they don't live very long at all now mm -hmm. um yeah. some of them probably only do live about a week and then you make this into beautiful art well i'm going to turn the screen over to you and okay. allow you to give us a preview of what you've got here okay here we go so here's one example of things I've made. This is a death head moth. Oh, um, wow. These ones come from Europe. Um, let me see if I can get closer. They have like the little skull actually on their back. And then mm -hmm. the, the background, I actually um, hand colored myself using different inks and dyes. And the planchet, my husband made that out of wood. So I have that one. Kind of a team effort there, huh? For that one, yeah. And then some cicadas. These guys I actually just found on the street. Um, so I just picked them up, put them in my purse, and brought them home and posed them and made things with them. Those are huge. How, <laughs> like, will you hold your fingers up? Just, I, I guess I kind of want to see. Yeah, those are, <laughs> in, I had no idea those bugs were that big. <laughs> oh, well, I have an even bigger one. Hold on. Let me see. So here's the same thing, just different colors with the Ouija board, but this is called a white ghost cicada. It's kind of hard to see, but. Uh, move to the other direction. There you go. The bottom wings are actually white and then the top are see-through. But they have but a cool this, design on them. It looks like the top wings. Yeah. Yep. And then this one's like really big, probably about a three inch wingspan. Three, man, that's a big bug. Yeah. Okay, here's an here's an even bigger one. <laughs> <laughs> I like how we're just getting bigger and bigger. Yeah. Oh my gosh, what is that? This is called a um, it's an atlas moth, but this particular one is called a snake mimic moth because if you look at the corners, you'll see the the tips of the wings actually kind of look move. like a snake face. Move a little bit more towards your face. There we go. And I'm trying to um angle it a little the other direction. Other direction. Nope. Nope. Ooh. Nope. There we go. Oh, <laughs> I, I can see your screen down there. Try, yeah. try going back the other direction a little more. And move the box actually towards your face. There you go. There, now angle it. Ooh, 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 there, got it. Right like at the tip there. Where oh, it does it? look like a snake. Yep, so what these ones will do when attacked, they'll drop to the ground and kind of writhe around like a snake so that predators will be deterred from eating them. But That's this one, interesting. this is probably about a nine inch wingspan. See, like with my hand, it's huge. And it's got a whole, it looks like you've got a whole diorama in there, like some moss that, or lichen and yep, things that are lichen, down there at the bottom. Yep, lichen, moss. Um, once again, things that I found myself and just dried them out. Um, and then he's actually on a piece of bark. Oh, cool. So I tend to make the backgrounds myself too. That is a beautiful, oh, you know, I think it actually, it, sorry, go ahead. Let's see what else. And I have ones that I've like, are inspired by different things. So I have oh, here that, before Christmas. Yeah, I love that one. That one's super cool. Count Morbid would love that one. <laughs> and then I did it to where, um, each one represented someone. So then this one, the black and white one is Jack, and then the other one has Sally's colors. So that is so cool. I love that one. Thank you. And besides that, I do different things with bone. Um, I've been making a lot of a lot of wreaths lately. So I have this. This is a skunk skull and jaw bones. Oh, I love skunks. I do, I do. Skunks are like one of my totem animals. <laughs> this is from a roadkill. So, it's, like I said, everything's ethically sourced. Um, and then just all the flowers I found and picked and dried them out. Let's put them all on there. So I have that one. So, some, some, good re some good wreaths that can be used to get in the crumpus mood, even, if that's more your flavor of Christmas, right? Yes. <laughs> yes. And then I have this that's one great. here. This one um, is a chicken skull, but then it has pheasant feathers and a pheasant foot bone. 
Um, what else does this have? This is, it's all juniper from my garden. And then there's different like dried berries and everything on there. That, I really like that one. That one's quite festive. <laughs> yep. Okay. And then I also make dolls um, out of corn husks. And I don't just make the traditional ones. Um, mm -hmm. You said something about Krampus. So I have. <laughs> Can't fit them. But what? here he is. Oh my gosh, that is adorable. It's like and a Krampus corn husk dog. Is the whole yeah. thing made out of corn husks? Um, the like whole thing, yes, except for his horns are from sticks or well vines actually that I found in the backyard. Um, but other than that, he's just cotton and corn husks. <clears throat> and he's got the bones of bad children in his back. <laughs> it's really coyote foot bones, but what does his front look like? They don't have faces, so he doesn't have a face, but. I like his beard. That is super cool. He's got, and there's his chain whip and everything. Yeah, he's got bells. Let me see. That guy is cool. And then you're really going to like this one, too. It's a fairy. Oh she's and she's made from corn husks and different dried flowers. And her wings are actually um, lily petals. Oh, she is beautiful, like a beautiful um, solstice fairy. And her hair is um, dried pine needles. And then wow. her little horns here, they're um, American porcupine quills. Wow, that is so beautiful. Of okay. course, I might be partial to that, but. <laughs> <laughs> Let me see. Got to be careful with her. Ah. And then this guy is pretty appropriate for this year. Oh, that's ridiculously cute. <laughs> yep. That Little, uh, plague doctor. And he's and got a chuck car skull, which is like a partridge. Oh, okay. I was just yeah. going to ask, what is that animal you just said? <laughs> so a bird skull of some yeah. sort. <laughs> mm -hmm. Oh man, that and he almost looks like he could be a tree topper. Yeah, actually, um, the the fairy and Krampus could be too. Oh, cool. Yeah, that... the underneath is made kind of like how the tree toppers are made. Oh, cool. So they could go blink right up there. Yes. I love that. And I know some people with some very gothy black trees as well, but that, that little guy would go perfect on top of. Right. <clears throat> All right. Uh, let me think. One, one, more, one more thing. And then, and then we're coming mm. up on our 10 minutes. It goes very fast. Huh? Yes, it does. <laughs> okay. Um, I'll show one more doll. Okay. Because she's got the elements of a couple things. So she's, a little, there you go. here we go. So she's pretty much just, all black corn husk that I dyed. And wow. then I used a stick from a pine tree and um, pine cones and an another chuckar skull. And I called her the the ghost of Yule yet to come. So you said you dye those corn husks and yeah. so they're not painted. You actually no. color them and then work with them well, and that's cool because then it, the, none of the color will chip off or anything as time nope. goes by. It's com they're completely dyed. I actually, um, to try to get the right colors, actually just leave them in the dye for a few days before I even work with them. I didn't even know that you could do that to corn husk. That is yep. very cool. Well, ladies and uh, ladybugs in yellow jackets, uh, this, let me pull us back here together. Yay, hello again. <laughs> so, um, <laughs> Well, with that said, we're coming up on our time, so we're gonna we're gonna bid adieu here. But as a reminder, of course, uh, all of the information for today's vendors are is in the low bar and in the ticker. So please use this weekend while you're out doing your things to go check them out. And now is the best time to really get those orders in for handmade folks because they have a lot of prep that they have to do to get the things shipped to you on time this year and i have heard some feedback from vendors actually over the past couple weeks that shipping is wonky this year so it is it, yeah it's been a little bit crazy so get go go do that shopping and, and get those orders in so they can get started on your awesome gifts so is there anything you'd like to say before we bid you adieu virginia 
Um, I do have a shop update coming up December 4th through the 6th for, uh, it's like a, a holiday odd oddity show. And there'll be over 100 vendors there. And all the information is on my Instagram page. Okay. Ho holiday show, December 4th through the 6th, shop update. Yes. So does shop update mean all, um, new items are being listed? Yeah. Um, pretty much everything I showed you isn't up yet, but it will be for the holiday shop. Awesome. That sounds super fun. Now I have things to go bookmark, right? <laughs> <laughs> All right. Thank you so much for joining us today. And with yeah. that, yes, we will, uh, we, we will bid you adieu. Okay. Thank you. And here we go. We are off to a start. Do I see our second vendor down there? I do not see them. So I do see though, our third vendor and i is it if it's okay that i bring you in early i i am guessing that i can hello uh, hi how are you doing all right how about you i am doing i'm doing well myself so i uh, i didn't see our next vendor so i brought you in here although i'm not sure it's actually early i think sometimes uh, fill in that space and then I get to talk in. So, well, welcome to the show. And I know you've been here before, the yes. Cedar Wardrobe. And I know that the last time you were here also, I did try to say your name, Lady Aodin. Aodin. Adin. Adin. <laughs> I don't think anybody else can see it because I put your banner up. Lady Adin, there it is. <laughs> so, <clears throat> uh, yes. Welcome to the show. And uh, please, if you will, tell us uh, who you are and what you make and give a shout out to any of your home fairs or kingdoms or shows. So I am Lady Adeen of the Kingdom of Kalantir within the Society for Creative Anachronism. Uh, I make, I specialize in medieval and Renaissance clothing. Uh, as you can see, I can also do fantasy stuff. Indeed, and it looks like you have some awesome things back there behind. I love this feathery thing that is on the top of your collar. It, lo it looks like feathers. Is this feathers it that I feathers. see? Yes. Feathers. All right. Well, I'm going to turn the screen over to you and allow you to show us your awesome wares. So here we go. All righty. So I made a mask that you can wear with this coat. They're both on my website under ritual wear. That is cool. It's almost like a it's almost like a masquerade plague mask. Yes. It's very is, much so. I don't think I have ever shown you my Persian wear. This coat, uh, the fabric is not period correct for this coat. It was a, supposed to be a mock-up, but I wanted a pretty fabric for it. It I like it. It's beautiful. What it's does it so what makes this Persian? Uh, it's the design and construction of it is Persian. So it's uh, it's a loose fitted coat. A basically. loose that goes over other things that you are wearing. Yes. Okay. I have also done children's garb. Oh, look at that. For my son. That is like itty bitty and cute. And it makes me think of all the kids that are in the nut, the first scene in the Nutcracker every year. They get all yeah. those little ballet kids out there, and they're wearing, you know, they're they're wearing like the period clothing for whatever oh, yeah. Nutcracker so is. <laughs> it is adorable, and that's what that it instantly made me think of. Time to go to a Christmas party. And then I do more tailored items like this. Uh, mm. This woman's doublet fits over a corset. Doesn't fit me anymore though, because I gained some plague pounds. <laughs> That's a thing. <laughs> and I have introduced some new things to the website. I can now do weavings for you. Let me get my sleeve out of the way. Oh wow! This one is a brocaded ankle woven band. Does it say something on it? It says my name. Let me get it right set up. Oh, how cool is that? So you can do these custom bands for people with their name on it. And what would they use this for, if, if I can ask? Uh, they can be used for a lot of things. They can be used for trim. They can be used for belts. They can be used for uh, bag straps. Oh, nice. Okay. 
yeah. And then this one is a threaded in tablet woven band. Oh, that's beautiful. Looks like leaves. Uh, the pattern's called the ram's horn. Right. Does not look like a ram's horn to me. <laughs> it's, it's, a, it's a variation on it. Artistic license. Yes. Oh, whoa. That's thick. That looks like it would be belt material. Oh, yeah. Definitely. And then I've got a couple <clears throat> that I have up on the now, loom ask, right now. Can I ask a quick question about yeah. that? those belt looking ones? What are you using to, like, what are what kind of thread, I guess I would call it, are you using to weave those? And it, how it how durable is that for putting things like whole pouches and all of that onto oh they're very durable uh the, the this one is just made from uh cotton crochet yarn okay i'm not sure on the size on it because it's like the the peaches and cream stuff that you can get at walmart and then these are just uh size 10 crochet cotton and so how do you clean them if they get dirty uh, you can just throw them in the wash. Nice. Easy peasy, nice and breezy. Yes. And then I've got one more to show you. It's a double, it's called double face weaving. Also tablet weaving on my big loom. So why is it, oh, is it double face because but either side of it? Oh, cool. The it's like two in one. Is. Yeah. Is does it take longer to do that, or is it just a matter of how does it that work? Does take, it does take longer <clears throat> because uh, with like the vine and the ram's horn, I know mm -hmm. those patterns like the back of my hand, so I can whip those out pretty quick. Uh, with double face patterns, you have to be very particular about how you turn the cards. Interesting. So that so so that you don't get a funky on yeah. one side and. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, it's it's only two colors most of the time, but mm -hmm. it's still pretty easy to mess it up if you don't do it right. Well, so can okay. I ask you a couple questions about about some of this? Now, if somebody wanted something made, uh, are they, how would they, I assume you can do custom work. Yes. Yes, and, uh, you do have to, uh, when, when you're ordering the woven bands, I do ask you for what colors you want and if there's any patterns in particular that you want. And then on your website, is there a selection of patterns and colors for people to be able to reference? I have not gotten those up yet. I haven't had time. But uh, yeah, it's a very busy season. So, so but they can, they, you can, of course, coordinate though. You can find colors yeah. and look them up and do the thing. So, um, and then I was kind of curious actually, if you would talk, speak a little bit to the type of fabric that you used in some of those clothing pieces that you were showing us. Can you tell me a little bit about what that fabric is like, how it cleans, it's a thick weight, all that kind of stuff. So, and I'm gonna give the screen back to you while you do this okay. here. So this one is just upholstery fabric from Joann's. So very thick and durable. Yeah. Uh, it's actually one of the thinner upholstery fabrics that I unfortunately cannot get anymore. Uh, this would be a spot clean or a dry clean. Okay. You would not want to throw this in the washer. Uh, this is also, I think this is from, this material is from Hancock's before it closed. Oh, so that was a sad day. <laughs> yes, yes it was. Um, so this one would also be a spot clean. Um, if you wanted something for a child that was more washing machine friendly, I could definitely do that. Not mm -hmm. a problem. I understand completely. <clears throat> he only wears this for quartz. Right. Because otherwise they're probably rolling around in the dirt. So, yeah. <laughs> so this, uh, the coat is made from just cotton and the lining is also cotton. Oh, nice. So you can just throw this in the, in the washing machine just fine. Uh, the pants are made from, I think, linen, so they can be washed just fine. Uh, the undershirt is linen and can be thrown in the wash. Uh, yeah. This coat, because it has feathers on it, cannot be thrown in the wash. So it would be a spot clean. The, those feathers are attached to the actual yeah. garment that you're wearing. What do, what do we call the garment that you're wearing? Is that a chemise? It's a ritual coat. A what? A feathered ritual coat. A 
feathered ritual cloak. And did you do the uh, the armbands that I see there? Did you make those, or is this like the type of use that the ones that you do make can be put to? This is something that the ones that I do make can be put to. I bought this from a place called Calendar Trim. And there and there it is. But that's that's a good example of how to do how to use the trims. And so it's, right. I think it's so cool that people can get the custom trims with their name and everything on it. But if they, that's cool, right? <laughs> you yeah. can give whatever you put for somebody. So that's pretty neat. Well, we're coming up here on 430. And so I see that you are participating in the magic word. Now, for those of you who don't know, the magic word this week is Santa Claus, as in Claus. Uh, it's, a, it's a little play on words if you watched Faye News on Wednesday. And actually, if you go to Faye News, if you go back in our videos here on the channel and you put the magic word Santa Claus on Wednesday's Faye News episode, you'll be entered to win the drawing that we have going for two uh, for a pair of leather claw hands that have been handmade. But um, Santa Claus is the word. And what that means is if you order from Cedar Wardrobe within this next week, you will get a bonus gift with your purchase. Do you want to leave it as a surprise or do you want to show people what you've got? I've got these little coin bags. I've also uh -huh. got some Harry Potter ones. Those are super cute. So yes, order, use the word Santa Claus and you will get, do, do they get to choose their color or are they just a random selection? Random. Yep, variety of those and you will get a, like free little coin bag in with your purchase. So that is very cool. Can you, is there anything else that you would like to say to everybody before we let you go today? Uh, yeah, I'm having a uh, sale this weekend. It goes until tomorrow, 10% off site-wide and on special orders. And is, there a, is there a code no, for no that? Code. It's, it's nope. just automatically applied and free okay. shipping on orders over a hundred. Oh, wow. Okay. I'm going to give me just one second. I will type that in here. 10% off site-wide at Cedar Wardrobe. Can you guys hear me clacking away? Because I... <laughs> 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 uh, and it was free shipping on orders over 100, right? Yep. Okay. And that goes until tomorrow. Okay. So uh, through Cyber Monday. Tomorrow is Monday. Yeah. <laughs> All right. That very cool. I've got that in the comments for everybody watching at home. And with that said, we will bid you adieu. Have a great day. Stay safe. Stay healthy. Yes. Thank you so much. You too. And I hope you had a wonderful day of feasting. Oh, yes. Hope you did too. <laughs> All right. So, okay, we are moving right along here. And our next vendor today is Stanley Forge Leather. I see you down there. Hello. Hi. Hi, welcome to the show. Thank you. How are you this afternoon? Good, how are you? Hope I'm you're feeling okay. I, I am, I am. I'm feeling, I, I am feeling perfectly fine. Maybe I'm a little mm -hmm. tired because we were up very late last night having yeah. a hedge game and so. There was lots of zaniness that was going on and with that. But other than that, I am perfectly fine. Uh, yes, so please, if you will, uh, introduce yourself to the audience. Tell us who you are, where you're from. Give a shout out to your peeps. Got it. My All name right. is Keith, and um, I'm the owner of uh, Stanley Forge Leather. And I, because like many, I found myself with a lot of extra time on my hands around March. And, yeah, <laughs> um, my father taught me the basics of leather working when I was a teen, and I guess it's just taken till now for it to kind of come out. And um, I just really love the process of leather working. And I'm up here in North Bend, Washington. Oh gosh, so it's you're close to me. Yeah. <laughs> you're you're not far from me at all. We were okay. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah. And so, you know, I just love the, like I said, the process of leather working and, uh, you know, I just, I feel calm and sort of at peace while I'm doing, you know, the process of it, like I'm sure a lot of other artists feel. And uh, yeah, so I make um, basically, like you can see behind me, medieval fantasy leather armor. And um, that will... thing behind you is impressive. <laughs> Thank you. Yep. I'm, uh, I pretty much have a full suit of armor and it's all up uh, available on my Etsy site. And I have different uh, helmets as well that I make, different colors. 
Well, so I'm going to turn the camera over to you then, and I will allow you to show us these things one by one or however you awesome. have uh, best decided to do your thing. So Perfect. yes, here you go. Great. So I have a, a little set of cuff bracers that I made for my fiance. Those are cute. Yeah. With the uh, snaps on the back. So that's easy. And then I uh, I just finished a set of purple gloves. Oh, those are awesome. How do those Can we see out? the insides of those? Yeah. So here's the other side. So it's just a pair of uh, nice leather gloves. Holy smokes. Those yeah. are fully outfitted. Yeah. And so they're all riveted inside. So they're all secure. And I can put one on for you. That would be enormous on my hand. <laughs> there we go. That That's looks the, so cool. Scales articulate. Jeez. Yeah. Now, t how thick is that leather, if I may? Um, I use seven to nine ounce uh, veg tan leather, so it's it's pretty thick. And it looks like it's got some purple to it, so implying that you can you you made it that color or yeah. can. Yeah. Well, here, let me take it off real quick, and I give you a close up view. I did a, a purple. There we go. And then I, I sort of splotched a gray and a black. Oh, there. yeah, I see. Slow, rotate real slow. Yeah, there we go. Got to so, give that camera time to. Yeah. So the those are are super cool. Yeah. And so the so it art, articulates as well. Man. And then. Very nice articulation, actually. Yeah. I'll have my fiance in my red one here. What? So that's, that again, that's a red with a gray and black over the top there. Now, is that meant to be worn alone by itself or over the top of something else? Um, no, it's uh, it can be just worn as is. Um, you can slip it on for you here. Oh, wow. And then the, the top, of course, opens up <sighs> so you can, that... you know, salute your enemy or... <laughs> that's, that's where the salute came from it was uh in the olden days having to lift your your visor so that is funny the whole salute yeah. your enemy yeah <laughs> we uh yeah, to that... Show that you're not an enemy i guess <laughs> we who are about to fight salute yeah. you <laughs> and here's more of the purple that is cool and all of that design on there is done hand tooled. Yeah, hand tooled, and um, you know I have a variety of different tools. So, uh, you know, custom orders and any tooling or just you know special colors, uh, any customer would like. You know, if I don't have it, I can order it. That is cool. Yeah. Yeah, and then I have the the full suit up behind me. I you know. I just, I'm dying to know what, what is the price range on a, like if somebody just went all the way, go all big or go home and got sure. everything, and what would that team? look like? Yeah. I'm sure that, I'm sure that it'll give me a heart attack because I have no idea what it should be. So <laughs> no, it, it, it's not that bad. Maybe uh 1500, you know, oh, for the whole, okay. for the whole suit. So, you know, each piece is a couple hundred dollars. Yeah. And uh, you know, it, it takes you know a good amount of time so uh but the full suit you know about 1500 well, depending on how you bring that guy forward on his little mannequin stand and and show us these pieces close up yeah do you want can i try and get the camera a little closer you can indeed all right whichever works for you yeah and it actually looks like the midriff on that guy oh i'll wait till you get to that part you go <laughs> yep I'll use the blue helm And then my shoulders. Man, those are real, those are pretty. <laughs> With all that midsection here, that articulates as well. Yeah, that's what I was gonna say. So yeah. that when you're bending over yep. forward, it's mm -hmm. not gouging into your, you know, In lower your, abdomen. Yeah, and your belt line. Yeah. And then I've got the gloves for this guy too. And uh. Just at a silver trim for this guy. And what about these elbows? What are those elbows attached to? Are they attached to the shoulder piece? Uh, yeah, well, they're attached to the to the bracer here. Oh, and, okay. And the van brace up here. And so together, these articulate. 
you know, right here and here. I, I can't really show you that, but it allows the arm to move in full motion. Is it all one piece or do those come apart and you can slowly build till you have your whole arm covered there? Right. Yeah. These ones, uh, partic these ones in particular are connected, but I've made other sets for customers that are more modular and uh, they can be, you know, you can use just this guy or you can have just an upper arm piece or, or really any, any combination there. That is super cool. And, and so, and I just want to say, if there's, if there's questions out there from you guys watching at home, feel free to put those in the comments and we will ask away for any of the vendors. What is that? Like little foot pieces? And I have a set of shoes. What? Shoes super or foot protection. I mean, I guess that makes sense if you're out there, you don't want somebody, you know, stabbing through your foot. Leave the shine. <laughs> yeah. That is so awesome. Mm -hmm. I I really like I, I have a thing for the shoulder gauntlets. I don't yeah. know uh, what are they called? Uh pauldrons. pauldrons. Yeah. There we go. Yep, there I, you go. I think pauldrons are just so cool and I really love the belt style that you have on those. Oh, thank you. Yeah, you're you're welcome. <laughs> yeah. And and I have uh, one piece that I was uh, working on, sort of you know, in anticipation of the show. What? My, my dragon helm. Oh my god! You've got to put that on. I've got to see what that looks like <laughs> for the face inside of it. Huh? It's so cool. It's like like toothy and rah. That is awesome. Man, look at this. Are you seeing this? I like this. <laughs> <laughs> that is so cool. <laughs> opens up too. Yep, right up. <laughs> and then you can just do these in any color for somebody. I have another yeah. question. If they had a design or something that they wanted put on, do you have the ability? Like, so for example, the big mask on the blue guy there behind you, mm -hmm. it's there's no design in the middle area. Could you customize that to have something for somebody? Yeah, you mean in this area? Yeah, you bet. Yeah, yeah. Anything the customer uh, has in mind, I can work with them and design it into the leather. Uh, you know, I've done other work where I've had uh, custom concept art and uh, yes, leather cost leather pieces to go along with that. So, because see, so next year for 2021, we mm -hmm. are planning to try to do a a live stream boffer tournament here oh. via our channel. Okay. And there is this small section of me that really wants to put on leather armor and then just go probably lose to everybody, even okay. though I probably won't get to do that. I, I won't get to be in that role, but I really, really want to. I made a buffer sword this year, so I'm just like, yeah, looking at all the leather armor. Getting excited. <laughs> yes, yes, right? This is the season to buy all the things, so... Yep. So I've got one more piece to show you. Yeah, okay, show me, show me. It's my mom's Christmas present, and so she hasn't seen it yet. So she's gonna. I think she's watching, so she'll get to see it. Um, it's a. Uh, it's a leather vase oh, with leather roses. A little closer, and I just threw some glass, uh, you know, fish tank cabochons in there. Yeah, look at that. Yeah. And so that actually looks, it looks like it's hand like sculpted, the yeah. vase does. And then it, right. you know how you do the copper, the pounding of copper to make the little, that's what that looks like you did oh, there. The texture here? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, I just used my background tool and then came up with a nice light blue for sky and, uh, you know, tooled in the, you know, the blades of grass. And uh, I think my mom will like that that it i can't imagine who wouldn't like it it's right. awesome and I, and I can also make you know one for a customer if they want one so right unique unique gifts for your lovely other half yeah well that is super awesome thank you so much for sharing all these things uh with, yeah with us today now i also have that you are doing the uh, um the magic word which is mm -hmm. santa claus everybody yep. uh, so if people enter the word or mention the word santa claus uh in purchasing from you 
then they will get a bonus gift with their purchase. Did you want to leave it as a surprise or do you want to show our viewers at home? I actually have them here to show. Okay. And, uh, yeah, it's a set of, uh, actually it'd be one single knife. What? And so it's, um, yeah, there we go. Oh, and there's all the colors of the leather. Yeah. How cool. Yeah, and so they're, you know, hand-tooled leather sheaths, and their inside is a uh, little emergency knife, and yeah. it's sort of meant to be worn under a shirt or, you know, just in case for emergencies. And yes, customer subtle. Can and, uh, choose whichever color they want. Um, they're all listed on my Etsy page, all the colors, so okay. they can choose whatever one they want, and I'll include that with the order. Nice. That is an awesome, that's like the awesome, perfect stocking stuffer bonus gift, right? <laughs> Yeah. Get your guy or, or gal. So, right? Yeah. yeah, that's right. Don't rule the ladies out, you know. Right. We we have secret ninja places in our hair and stuff to, to, hide, right. to hide knives. Right. <laughs> uh, yes, so uh, with that said, is there anything else that you would like to say before we let you go this afternoon? Uh, just thank you for, again very much for having me on. And Absolutely. Um, I've got plenty of raw materials, so if any of the you know viewers out there want to contact me uh, with their ideas and I can get um, started on some design work and that would be learning. awesome yeah very cool well thank you so much and enjoy the rest of your Sunday you too thank you all right bye bye bye, bye Wally that was awesome and it brings us here to our last vendor of the day do I see you down there Hello. Hello, how are you doing? I'm doing all right. I I feel like I have a mix up here. Do I have a mix up? I feel like I have somehow put wrong information into my thing. And so I don't have a banner made for you. Gosh darn it. Did I mix did I really mix this up? I think I did. I found out about it about two vendors ago, so uh, let's see. I want to take this down here really quick. Thanks. I'm so sorry. I made, I made a boo, boo, boo. Don't worry. Well, if you will, please introduce yourselves to our audience. Tell us who you are and, uh, and where you're from and give a shout out to your people. Alrighty. Well, um, I'm, uh, in the society of creative anachronism, uh, Mr. Svera Corbe. And I'm the business partner, Hugh Dupuy, who needs to get in the camera. And I hide um, outside here because it's safer for everybody. <laughs> yeah. And uh, we at Dupuy Creations, we are in Calentier. And we have, we are in the process, actually, we've expanded the two studios since the last time we saw your show, we're on your show. Oh my gosh. We are expanding during this time period with our offerings. But we do medieval furniture, spindles, spindle wheels, musical instruments. Uh, we are just now getting into customized laser work as well. So we'll Sweet. be offering things like journals and um, wood, wooden journals uh, with custom artwork. And we are also um, offering Photoshop portraits uh, with fantasy or historical backgrounds to put your people in. So that sounds awesome. Since we can't get together, we can, you know, send a couple pictures and put everybody together and go from there. That is kind a fun idea, actually. Like get everybody all together in a cool picture with a fun fantasy background. Oh, yeah. Oh, uh, okay. Yeah. Bob in one town and, and Seth in the other could take photos and then they send them to me and then I put them together and boom, there you go. Well, I'm going to turn the screen over to you here and um, and give you the whole thing so we can see what you've got and away Thank you, you go. Yes. Um, please don't mind my basement. I'm just moving in. So we um, we love our spindles and we have low world drop spindles. We have Turkish style drop spindles and these have a wonderful point. So they can also be used as support spindles. So you can spin in the air or use them as a support spindle. And when you're done, these come apart, of course. So is this what makes them Turkish or is it that cross shape that makes them Turkish? Turkish oh, cool. spindles come across and 
um, there's a couple of different variations, but this is just an, an average of them all. But you mm -hmm. can see that they're very portable. And as you're winding yarn onto them, that you're creating your string, it creates its own center pool ball. So you take it off, and if you're working with singles, then you immediately start using it. If you're going to you know, carpet or if you want to ply it, then you have a couple of these balls, you put them together, and then you start plying. Um, that is cool. And these come in different sizes. I like the fact that you can use them as a support spindle too, because it, it makes it very useful for spinning things like silk. Uh -huh. uh, and it's very fine. Um, I love fiber. We um, will be doing some dyeing as well. We do custom dyeing. So we'll be coming out with that as I get it set up in the new location. Um, so, but you can get fiber to go with these. And we do the Russians hue. Um, it's all the lathe time right now. So oh, the, they are beautiful. Those um, are really nice spindles. They are cute. They're delightful. We also have Tibetan style support spindles. Um, this one's kind of a cross between Tibetan and a bead whirl and top whirl spindles, but I can't quite put my hand on it. And I'm really excited. Um, I, I think, that, oh, there's one. He's, I don't there know. There we go. See it. The woods are usually a combination. There'll be something like Babinga and Red Heart, or this one is Red Heart. Oh, this is Babinga and Red Heart. Um, and we try to get interesting wood combinations. Um, yeah, those are very bright, colorful woods. We, yeah, I'm a ferret on crack. <laughs> so I, I need things that are bright. And I'm really excited. <clears throat> um, since we saw you last, we have, we've added a new design for our, our liars. And so we have these now, and they are portable, and they can be painted. So I'm in the That's process cool. of uh, working on this one and stringing it for the first time, and I painted it with unicorn spit. And it's hard to see, I know. But no, I, I can see it. <laughs> well, this, this will give me an outlet because I'm hoping that people who are also in the rent fairs and fairy fairs and such will enjoy these because they're portable. You can you can sling them in a, a shoulder bag and stuff, and we can customize them. And that's what, you know, if you love your instrument and it speaks to you and it shows your personality, you'll play it. That is very true. Uh, I'm just looking at those going, oh man, I could wood burn in that and it would look so cool because I, I mean, I bling out my travel flutes. So they're all shiny and have, they have themes. I want to hear one of these things pluck, pluck away here. Well, now the only you problem is, yeah, the only problem is, is <laughs> I've just strung these so they are not uh, perfectly in tune. Wait, a little bit, a little bit more to the center towards your husband. There we go. Yeah, it's my business partner. Oh, I'm sorry. My, my husband's hiding upstairs. <laughs> yeah, we'll never marry, thank God. Oh, thank sorry. You. Would you quit picking on me? Every time you pick on me on YouTube, I embarrass myself. Um, I can't even concentrate. I'm so sorry. Um, these use just just carpet. pluck it so we can. I would just like to. You don't have to play anything. I just want to hear it. Um, like I said, that it hasn't settled in for its tuning. So I was just going to ask about how the tuning on those works. Um, if I remember correctly, this one starts in G and it's just like tuning a harp. Um, so I want to say I have G and I, I tend to go to F sharps. I like to tune in minors, but, um, G, A, B, C, D, E, F, G. And so on this one, 16 strings, the green one is 19. The goose behind me with the wood burning is um i want to say 18 or 20 strings and they, it's a related style of instrument that's not a dulcimer of some sort well they are related um gooseleys are sultries oh sultry okay i love sultries i have one these are these are a type of sultry and in the um baltic countries you play them sitting on your lap you can play them like this Ooh, listen to the sound on that. Um, and like I said, 
Mm. Everything's pretty much out of tune right now because we've been moving into the garage and. Well, it's also wood. So basically, if you have a cold day than a hot day, it's out of tune. <laughs> so. uh, we put these on Etsy. We have the spindles on Etsy. Um, and of course, we do medieval furniture and we've been doing takedown furniture. So it is um, in pieces. What is takedown furniture? Define furniture that we are painting. Um, cool. So if you have the desire to have a lovely campsite but you have a small car <laughs> and there's one that. piece of it um and then i've just been having a lot of fun exploring different patterns and such as i paint i you know put on my uh 90s hairband music and kick it with the airbrush and embarrass my teenager <laughs> um and then we, we uh, also, you know, have the medieval furniture, but it's a little harder to um, get places right now. But we do ship, and it's it's usually fairly reasonable. Um, the X stool behind the X chair behind me folds up flat and long. So I was going to ask about shipping because I know it's kind of a kind of a thing in this season. Um, and I happened, I found myself going around Etsy the other day looking at chairs not dissimilar to that. I found a chair that somebody had made. It was $90 and the shipping was $109. And I'm just wondering if that sounds right to you. Probably, yeah. Um, yeah? I just shipped a spindle wheel to Alaska. Um, when I put the numbers into the FedEx ca calculator, yeah. it came back $210 to ship a $200 <gasps> item. I took it to my shipper and he managed to get it down to about half that just by making the box a little bit smaller than what I had planned. But um, even still, yeah. that's a, yeah. Okay. I mean, it's all based on package size and weight. And right. With, with furniture, it's on the heavier side and some of it isn't always necessarily that small. So, right. I, mean, I just said, I have no idea what that cost would be. Right. As a, I mean, I don't buy furniture on the internet all the time. And so I kind of want to give people a realistic idea of what shipping looks like, it, you know, because sometimes you'll see these things and then you're like, that person is trying to price gouge me by using shipping, you know, but it, that's it being we furniture. Just, that yeah, we tend to do sales where we will either um, pay for part or all of the shipping or something mm -hmm. like that. And, so and about once a month or so, it's either free shipping or there's a discount on the item and we pay half the shipping. Oh, cool. So that's one of the ways that we've tried to help our customers and we've had good response with that. Um, the other thing that we're doing is since we're doing the uh, laser burning stuff, mm -hmm. we can customize things really nicely. Um, so, whoops, sorry, I'm never good at this. Oh, I like that one. Oh, that oh it's, I had so much fun with it. It's, it's a wild Christmas. Um, yeah. <laughs> and uh, so we'll, uh, these are still in production, but we'll be putting the things like this on now that's a book cover that you just held up there. Mm -hmm. So these are yep. samples. I'm still tuning them a little bit. Um, mm -hmm. And then I'm also, this one's sort of silly, but I'll be doing ones that have uh, a little bit of, let's see, I don't know if you can, sorry, I'm bad at this. Toward your a own little, face, yes. <laughs> a little bit of paint as well. There we go. Stain and stuff. So this one is laser burn and stain. I wanted to give it a, a drooled accent. And it'll probably end up being darkened through here. Uh -huh. um, and uh, I love bullet journals and writing down lists. And so this is a natural progression for that. Um, and right now, you know, being able to customize stuff is wonderful because we can put it on the fiber tools. We can put it on uh, books. We can put it on the instruments and so on. Well, so and I, um, I have a question about that with the mm -hmm. design. If somebody had their own design, are you able to wood burn or laser burn that? And if so, what does that process look like for the shopper? If somebody has their own design, if they will send it to me, um, I basically will take it into the Adobe Suites, uh, Photoshop or, mm -hmm. or something of that nature, and I will turn it into a vector file. Okay. And uh, I've, I've had an advertising background, so that's always fun. So I'll, I'll be like, okay, here's who, what, when, where, and why. We're writing this down. And then when I do the work, I send it back for approval and say, is this what you wanted? And make sure because the communication is the key to, to you know, really working things out with ads and with artwork. 
is what I found. Um, and, I mean, as for custom, this is one I did. It's got a big old L on it for my last Oh, name. that's pretty. But yeah, I mean, this will be yeah. one of the styles of journals. That, let me get there. One of the styles of journals that we're going to do with the two, yeah. three ring binder things in them. And, yep. and that way you can refill it and... Mm -hmm. right. We want everybody to be able to use it and keep using it because items like this are going to stick with you. I have a journal that I got at my first run fair a long time ago, and I'm still using it on a daily basis, and that was 20-some years ago. So can I ask a question about that journal there with that paper? The hole punching in that is pretty unique. Not everybody has a six ring in pairs of three hole puncher. <laughs> and so do you sell yeah. the paper also that people can get refills? Yeah, you can buy the paper as refills mm -hmm. and stuff just like this. Perfect. So yeah. The standard as a standard, was it A5, we, I think it is. We will have the paper available if we're selling on site. And then there's also the availability online to get it like off of Amazon and stuff. We oh, have okay. different binders that we're going to use because we want people to be able to uh, find what's easy for them. One of the things that's cool about that too is that that front that front cover. Gosh, I kept wanting to say page. Uh, the front cover flip will, looks like it'll flip all the way around. Yeah. And at least I know from my own because I love to write as well that that is so handy. Just that it opens flat, super flat, right, and doesn't try to close on you when you're writing. Right. And one of the things I, I I paint a lot, and so I like the idea that I can take it and I can hold it, and I'm not going to be too worried while I'm doing my landscape stuff. But I can also take the paper and I can add sketch paper in part of it as well. Oh, cool! So, That's a good idea. Uh, I, it, I kind of took that idea from the travel journals that are very popular in the journaling community. Yeah, definitely. Oh, um, we 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 are also offering SCA themed stickers. SCA theme stickers. Tell me about this a little bit, if you will. Um, we, I have been kind of digitizing and making little uh, painted cartoons of our products and SCA stuff in general. And it is, you're, you're I, I cleaned up. That's the problem. Um, anyway, he was about to kill me because on one of the pages of stickers, I had this lovely furniture and stuff. And then I added tiki torches, a water cooler, and a bag chair uh, because that's my sense of humor. But um, at any rate, we'll be adding little stickers and castles and people and things like that. Um, just, it's something fun. Right. You know, we, we can't all be together right now, but we can have fun. Right. And so it, one of my thoughts is, you know, we can send the stickers and we can personalize the stickers as well. People want them personalized. And then you can put a background, send the stickers, and you can send it to your friends as something right. just to keep in touch. It, that's, that's which is really, it is. It is very important right now, especially with everybody feeling so isolated and all the events and canceled and all the stuff yeah. and things. So, well, I'm in a that, basement. You're in a basement. <laughs> Hopefully, they let you out sometimes. <laughs> very, very I don't little. know. We don't. I'm, we, from we the south. I'm from the south, from Atlantia, where it's still t shirt weather, and I have moved to Calentier. It's already snowed many times here. Today. Like three days ago. Yes. Do they do they make you also uh, spin them uh, piles of gold thread every night? Come down, check on you. <laughs> I, I, that's what's paying the bill. Right? I make I I work her like a slave. I mean, to, to be fair, there is a type of silk that I to have be fair. The, yep, there is a type of silk that I have. I, we have Sussa silk, and um, it has a gold cast to it. And then I have another type of silk that's even more rare. That part's my private stock. But um, when you spin it, it's, it is golden. And it that... gives you a metallic iridescent thing. <laughs> I'm, I can't tell you how, how much it pleases my little heart <laughs> that you were like, actually, I can do this thing. <laughs> I'm, I'm AD crafty. That is awesome. <laughs> it's just like, no, no, that's not really a joke. We, I can do that. Yeah, See, no, my, my, I, I spin, weave, dive, felt, do artwork, ride horses, uh, fight. I'm, I'm a fighter in the SCA. Also, the, the ADHD manifests in many ways. Uh, so our, our previous vendor then had things that are of possible interest to you as you get out there wielding swords. Oh yeah, <laughs> with all his awesome armor. Uh, 
so can I ask you one quick question about those drop spindles going all the way back to the first thing you showed us? Um, you you were calling them a support spindle, and I have never heard that term. What does that term mean? Well, a support spindle is often used to spin. Uh, like there's a Russian, uh, the Russian support spindles, for example, you would spin a type of goat hair, the Orenburg lace spindles. And because it is spun in a ball, this is a ball by Spanish Peacock, who got his start in the SCA also, um, plugged for my laurel there. But um, as you spin it, the yarn is supported. So you can go as thin as you want. You can go gossamer, gossamer weight with a supported spindle. And I understand. I like this because you can also use the Turkish this way. Um, I am interested in an, uh, a less well-known group of nomads in the uh, in, in Persia, um, and I will probably butcher this, but my Persian friends say Quash Kwai'i. Uh, and the spinners there have a type of spindle that's similar to the Turkic, but very unique. And it is generally like this, and they spin for the carpet until it gets too heavy and then they put it on the ground and keep spinning. And I thought, well, you know what, why aren't we doing that? Um, so we started doing that with these as well. So it gives you added abilities. But um, silk is one of those things where a lot of people are afraid of it. It has a lot of hype, but when you start working with it, it's actually quite approachable and very fun. So I just spend lots of silk in the pants. Well, there it is. That answers that question for me. So without those cool, <laughs> you you said earlier when you were talking about how the, the cross one will make it kind of into a ball. I mm -hmm. thought, oh, look, it's an auto, it's an automatic cat toy maker. <laughs> well, if you're, if you're, if you do it correctly, you can cross it. It makes a, the God's eye pattern. Like you oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. And then the sport spindles, we sell balls, but this ball is by Spanish Peacock, who is out of Atlantia. And um, you have, it is best to have a bowl of some sort. You can put it in your lap. You can put it on the table. Mm -hmm. You can sit very quietly and just spin on your lap and it very discreetly with a support spindle. Nice. I, like this, which is it, you know, me on the playground. That's me. That, that's, that's, uh, I didn't even know a support spindle was a thing. And I actually find it uh, very soothing. Like, calming in my brain to or maybe that's just because my brain I get very focused on that one thing and tune everything out and that lets the zen relaxation occur but uh <clears throat> I'm very terrible at it though my thread sucks it's just like a thing that I do because it's <laughs> it's calming well if you spin on the <clears throat> spinning on the spindle wheel behind us mm -hmm. um, is is basically the same thing you'll end up with one hand turning the wheel and the other hand is simply has a cloud of fluff and it's pulling back in a long drop generally. And then you wind back on and then you keep going. And both of them I find are, are just, the process of it is like you said, it's very calming. I, I have no clue what you're talking about. A, a, like I know what a spinning wheel is, the kind that you use your foot. Oh. It's basically, a, it's, a, it's just a, it's mm -hmm. more of a, this one's portable and it's not 100% assembled right now. But. You showed that to me right. last time, I think. These, this style predates the European spinning wheels, and you still find it. And you also find it in use still for silk manufacture. But um, we make them so that they come apart. You can collapse them down very small. And then, you know, if you're going to your weekend event and you want to spin, and there you go. That um, is cool. And all these things can be found on your website or you. will be able to be found in the short order future since exactly. you just moved and you may have some new things and things to still yet get up so new things still yep well we are coming up it's 507 we've gone over our time a little bit here but that's okay um is there anything you would like to say before we uh, bid you adieu for the afternoon we appreciate it, the opportunity and we um are very excited i know i'm really bad at this because i lose words Sorry. But it, it is, don't, don't worry about it. I have like word train wrecks in my mouth all the time. And it's like, they wanted to come out in order, but they yep. just kind of. Aphasia. <laughs> is that actually the name of what that's called? <laughs> like, it's, I, can I just, <laughs> I just like, I feel the need to point out the irony of, I, I lose words, 
but I know yeah. the word for losing the word. <laughs> you know, that spinny thing that goes round and round and makes the yarn. And it's sitting on the flat thing that you put stuff <clears throat> on to eat. It's yeah. a, and, and then they look at me like I'm nuts. So, yeah, oh my it. gosh, I'm dying. Yeah. Well, um, so yeah, there it is. You, you are our last vendor of the show today. Everybody watching from home, if you will, please hit the like and subscribe button. Go see our amazing vendors that we had on the show today. Now is the time to be ordering your handmade stuff. And remember, go quality, not quantity this year, guys. It's 2020. <laughs> so, this, is, this is the place to do that. And I think with that said, it's Sunday. Our next show will be, uh, our next show will be Wednesday, Faye News. And before I bid you guys adieu, I just want to remind you one more time, you can sign up to get a free Faye Productions um, Yule card from all of us here. You just have to go to that little link right there. It's also in the low bar. And in addition, uh, in addition to that, if you go back to last week's Faye News, put in the word Santa Claus into the comment clause. <laughs> Uh, and you will be entered to win a pair of handmade leather claw gloves. They're awesome. So I was, everybody's jaw went oh, when, <laughs> when we showed them last week. That was very fun. So with that said, uh, I will bid everybody goodbye. Have a good evening. I hope you guys had a happy feasting day and also like a whole weekend of food coma from leftover pie and turkey and all the things. <laughs> so, all right. Good night, everybody. Good night. Thank you. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.